So I've been playing around with Gluster lately, and I wanted to uh, record a quick screencast on how you can uh, get up and running with a two-node Gluster cluster and a client uh, really in about 10 minutes on Fedora 25. And uh, it turns out it's not that difficult, but uh, you can this will get you started, and then you can... Uh, uh, you know, figure out how you want to, imp how uh, you can use Gluster in your environment. So the first thing I'm going to do, I always start from scratch because I don't want to prepare any of the environment ahead of time and skip steps because that is always annoying uh, when you're trying to go back and do it yourself. So I'm going to create all these machines from scratch so that there's no funny business. And we are going to, so I'm going to create a, uh, the two Gluster nodes first. So there's going to be called, called Gluster node one and node two. Um, all this created here. So this is kind of just uh, you know what what you need to get started. And uh, this is obviously a uh, OpenStack, uh, and so you can just I'm just creating machines out of thin air. These can, these can be bare metal machines or um, the client can be the same as the, uh, you know, the client can be mount the Gluster volumes on servers and stuff like that too. So there's there's no limitation. This is just one way of doing it. So if we go in here, we've got all of these starting up. Another thing we're going to do is uh, Gluster expects the, um, what, what it calls bricks. So the, each volume is made up of bricks on different hosts. And bricks are just basically a, a subdirectory somewhere on the host um, with a file system that ex, that supports extended attributes. But it does prefer that it be on a mount point other than your root file system, and that's because Gluster uh, tries to balance uh, usage across the different um, nodes in the cluster. And if things, if something outside Gluster is eating up disk space, then it can't make educated choices about that. So it's better to have it on the the brick storage on a different file system. And so the way I'm going to do that here is, uh, well, these are left over from a, lot, a previous run, so we'll just delete those and recreate them. But I'm going to create two uh, cinder volumes that'll be mounted at deb uh, vdb vdb on the uh, on the Gluster nodes. So we'll say node one, and we'll make it 20 gigabytes. And then create another one, node two, with 20 gigabytes. And again, all these concepts map to other cloud providers. Um, so you can just do whatever they call these things. You know, uh, for Cinder, for example, AWS, it's a it's an EBS volume, right? So I'm going to mount those volumes, attach those volumes to the nodes. And then the last thing I'm going to do is assign uh, floating IP addresses to these so that I can get to them from where I am. Okay, so that, that built up the infrastructure, that's all done. So we're just gonna, so now you can see that these are three from scratch Fedora 25 machines. So what we are going to do, log into these nodes. Okay, so I'm going to go through one of the processes slowly on one node and then do it quickly on the other one. So uh, the first thing I do here, it's easy. It's easier just to become root and issue all these things since almost all the commands require root privileges. Uh, I'm going to turn off SE Linux. Uh, the, this isn't necessarily required. Uh, there, there are uh, the default policies. Don't know where you're going to put your 
Gluster bricks, and so you can create you can create SE Linux rules and not just globally uh, turn it off like this, which isn't really a good idea in production. So I wouldn't recommend this in production. Uh, but for this demo, it makes it simpler. So I'm just going to go with that, and then I'm going to install the Gluster server software. I'm going to go ahead and uh, catch this other one up at the same time because this can take a while. So I don't want to waste any more time, and then is required, but I do want to show every step. And I'll go ahead and uh, start the installation of the on the Gluster client too. On the Gluster client, you'll need um, a package called GlusterFS-Fuse, and that is the user space file system driver for Gluster. All right, so now node one is done installing um, and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, enable, use the enable dash dash now, which enables and starts the Gluster um, server service. The next thing I'm gonna do is create the partition that the brick is going to be on. So I, I'm gonna, this is that volume that I attached, the sender volume that I attached this instance. So I'm just gonna create a new partition one, yep, all the space, and then write that. The next thing I'm going to do is create an XFS file system on that partition. And then I'm going to add that to my FS tab so that it gets mounted the next time. For this demo, I'm not going to reboot these nodes, so it doesn't really matter. But I mounted it uh, slash SVR, SVR. Wherever you want to put your bricks, you can change this for your, uh, for your use case. Then I'm going to mount the brick storage. And then I'm going to make a directory for the brick. That I'm uh, the 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 cluster volume is going to be called my vol, so I call it my vol for the brick directories too. <clears throat> so that now this node is uh, ready to go, I'm going to catch up on node two and do the same thing. So I'm going to enable the cluster service and then create the brick partition. New p there we go. All right. Create the XFS file system on that partition. Add it to the FS tab. Mount the brick storage and then create the brick directory. So the next steps you only have to do on one node or the other. I'm going to do it on node one. Um, and so th there's really no notion of master and slave. They're, they're all peers, um, but you do have to start the cluster um, you do have to create the volume on one, one of the nodes. So in this case, I'm going to do node one. So I'm going to tell node one to probe the peer node, uh, which is node two in its case. And then we're going to create the Gluster volume. So this is uh, Gluster volume create, the name of the volume, replicas, in my case, replicas two. I've only got two nodes. But basically what it means is, is it going to every file that gets written to the volume is going to be replicated onto both of the nodes. And then here's the, you know, the node name and the path to the brick storage on each node. So once you do that, uh, it creates the volume and then you have to issue a volume start with the volume name. And then it says volume start success. All right. So now your, your cluster cluster is ready with a volume ready to mount by ready to be mounted by a client. So I'm going to jump over here to the Gluster client, and the only thing you've got to do is this. So the type of the file system is GlusterFS, and that's going to uh, call into Fuse to use the user space driver to mount the, the Gluster volume to a mount point. So here I'm. So this is just you know one of the nodes. I, this could be node two as well. Uh, slash the name of the Gluster volume, not not the path on the node on the nodes to the bricks, but the actual volume name that's seen cluster wide. And then the mount point that you want locally um, locally mounted to. So if we go in here and we say echo testing to file A, cat A, if we go in here to the brick storage on each of the nodes, you can see that we have a file named A now. And because it's replicas two, it's replicating across both nodes. So if I go in here, A is also here, and there we go. So that is a basic cluster cluster setup on 
Fedora 25 didn't take that long and uh, it, it can expand greatly from here. So hope that was helpful and catch you in the next one.